Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Well guys, whatever you do, if you're outdoors camping, if you're going fishing, if you're in the house, sooner or later, you're gonna need sharp knives. Here's some tips, very briefly, of ways I sharpen my knives and which knives I use. To be honest, when I looked at it and went through it, I only pulled it, well, I got, I got a kitchen full of knives, obviously I have, and I've got plenty of bait knives, etc. but, there's actually only five knives I use pretty well for everything. It's these. It's just these five here. I'll go through them individually. This one comes with a plastic sheath there. It's my bait shore fishing knife. Now it seems daft to take a small one shore fishing, but I do. I like a nice short knife when I'm shore fishing. And it has that little release catch on there. Can you see that? If I pop it down like this, You'll see that, that little curved plastic actually locks it in place. It comes out. Most sheaths when you put a knife away are going to get full of gunk if you don't wash them off. This one has all the holes there. You see, so you can actually wash it out. Good idea. It's got a descaler on the back there. A nice plastic handle. You can put it on a lanyard as well there, I guess, if you want. I find it's a very thick, fat steel. It's strong. Plenty good enough for cutting out bait for shore fishing. Bit of a pain to sharpen. But once you get it sharp, it's good. But I think what you do is you clip stones and things on the, on the beach or, or rocks if you're rock fishing, takes the edge off. So that's what I use shore fishing and it's got that safety shield with it. Just pop it on. Filleting fish, it is a filleting knife. They're thin, got a nice handle, none slip, good grip to it, but it's flexible. As you can see there, look, very flexible because you wanna be able to run that down the backbone of the fish Follow the backbone along when you're taking fillets off. You can just, it's very, very light. So the handle's heavier than the blade, if that makes sense, like this. Way heavier. So it, it just gives you more manipulation with your wrist to be able to work away slowly with basically, I want to say, that much of the blade. Not even half. Probably the top third of the blade is the piece I use for taking fillets of fish. And indeed, cutting bait up. My go-to knife when I'm chunking up stuff and going through bones is this. It's just one of a regular kitchen group knife. But I like the curve up here, feel safe with it. Sort of rubberized grip, gives you good grip, sharpens pretty well. And obviously, if I've got anything hard, I can go through it with this. Bones, uh, skeletons, I cut trout heads up, anything with that. So that's my go-to general all-purpose in the workshop, general work knife. Out with Mike in TA Outdoors, when we're doing the outdoors bushcraft stuff. This is my outdoors knife. As you can see, it's not English. Lovely shape, like a berry shape to it. I absolutely love this one. I can get my finger, it's got the nice finger shield under there. I don't like personally those bushcraft knives that are just round off. I'm always frightened if you hit anything, you're gonna skid off and open your finger up right down to the bone because some of those knives are sharp. So that's my favorite outdoors knife, if you like. There it is. It's a beauty, it's been featured in Mike shows many times and I use that for my outdoors work. That sharpens up well because it's old. It's very, very old, this one. It's a nice steel. And finally, when I'm serving in the kitchen or doing kitchen work, I use a regular kitchen steel knife. Well, we won't say the mate, they weren't free. Uh, but what I will say is a very wide blade there. Um, that is because you can get a nice slice when I'm doing turkey, chicken, meat, anything like that. I want a nice thin slice for the table. This is the knife to do it. So now, what to sharpen these bad boys on. There's a variety of different implements and stones you can use, but for this wide one here, for the kitchen knife, you know, when I'm slicing, it's a slicing knife, that's what it's, because it doesn't deviate too much. Once you get it going, the width of that blade rests against the rest of the meat, and you can imagine it cuts it nice and smooth and thin. The wife likes that. She likes it nicely presented. Me, I cut it anyhow, it's just food, I'll eat it. But for that, I use an old school steel. So, for sharpening this wide-bladed knife, kitchen knife, for slicing roast beef joints, general meat use in the kitchen, I use this steel. It's a very, very old one. It's called, really, a honing steel. You can get ceramic ones now. This one has a stamp on it. It's made by T. Turner & Co. It's probably Edwardian, so it's 100 years old. We have the meat spike with it, matching as well, and it's got an old antique bone handle as well. Belonged to, I believe, my grandmother. Still going strong, still sharpening knives. 
Now the secret really is not to go too, too steep an angle and not too shallow an angle. If you go too shallow an angle, you're sort of defeating the object, aren't you? You know, you could, you're just doing the blade on the side. If you go too deep, you're gonna start rounding it across. And then when you go the other way, you're gonna round it back. You're going backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. So the way to do it is basically just try and keep a narrow edge on it like this. And be very careful with all sharp knives. And I'm gonna call it an angle there. This has all fine line ridges down it. So every stroke of the knife is just gonna take a very, very, very fine piece off. It's not really this, you wouldn't use this for, as daft as it says, heavy duty sharpening. It's for really a honing, a honing steel as well. It just puts a little bit extra on it and refines it, if you like. So it's used in kitchens, really, the world over. So you'd be going this sort of motion. You do not need a huge amount of power to it. You'll be watching very carefully and making sure you do not bring that knife blade too near your fingers. That's why I say if you keep it vertical, you could have a problem. It's best I find there. And all the ridges, the lines in the steel are going that way. So this way, each stroke is taking a little bit off of that. She has to, little, honestly, it's really barely taking any off at all. You feel stupidly as though you're doing nothing. I'm mentioning this just purely because people, people can get extremely violent at it and they're ripping at the steel thinking the harder they push, the sharper the knife is. No, in fact, I think the lighter you go, the better it gets. That is getting sharper now. And this, look, we're not performing brain surgery, are we? We're cutting a joint of beef for the, for the dinner table. And it's something to remember, with a honing steel like this, if you had something, just to give you a vague idea, let's say a Japanese samurai sword, it is obviously extremely very, very hard steel. If the steel on the blade is harder than the steel on the honing rod here, you're going to be doing anything, are you? You're not going to be doing anything. But for most regular modern kitchen knives, they're going to be made of fairly fairly sort of, let's call it cheap steel. This would be very good steel because it's 100 years old. So that will do the job for most modern kitchen knives. But you can get various different types of honing rods. You can get ceramic ones, coarse ones, different grades, different, you know, methods of sharpening to get a good blade on there. So that's me for sharpening. Now, for my ordinary one, I'm gonna call it my regular rip at anything type of knife. You can use these. And this is a diamond hone sharpener. It actually has two grooves in there, one for serrated knives, one for straight edge knives. Now, you would grip it like this and put it down somewhere flat. Obviously, the principle of stroking it across here, but don't do it by hand like I'm doing it. It's supposed to go down and you're supposed to draw the knife towards you like this, I'll show you. So just for the purpose of showing you, I've actually put a piece of toweling down, which is not a bad idea on any table, because it gives you somewhere to sort of good grip, non-slip. It's down on the worktop. You just place the blade over here and you draw it under pressure, level and even across that groove there. Now, this is a really a diamond abrasive, but more importantly, what that's doing is cutting both sides of the blade evenly. So it's a sort of quick and easy way of doing it. I imagine there's a lot of people that use this style of sharpening tool for their blades in the catering industry because it's quick and easy. That is very, very sharp now. But if I can imagine, it's doing that. It's cutting both sides of the knife in one go. This side and that side. And this is easily going to get blunted when I'm cutting through entire carcasses, skeletons and bones. And that's a good, tough, strong bladed knife, that one. So if you've got a, what I call a, almost a work knife, bait knife, fishing knife, outside, cutting rope, anything like that, that is very sharp now. So maybe 20 or 30 drawers through there should do that. It's just an easy, lightweight, easy to grip hold of, sharpening grooved abrasion in there. One side is for scissors, the other side is for knives. 
So you hold it like this, this one I can do, and you just stroke it away from yourself, and it's gonna sharpen again. Same principle, it's going to be taking a little bit of steel off each time on one of those draw throughs like this. Again, be very, very careful. Some people like to wear gloves doing this, but you are pulling it away. I can hear it, you can actually hear it sort of bite and grip, and you think it's not taking anything off. I can assure you it is. That is now sharp. And if you want to start firmly, you can do light strokes as well. Look, very light strokes. I can actually feel the grip of the metal being cut there. And I'll tell you what I'm gonna do is show you. You probably think there's nothing happening. He's just making a noise. No, I can assure you there is something happening. It's getting sharper and sharper because I can feel the, the grip of the abrasive on the steel in there. That is very sharp now. That's plenty good enough for me to go fishing with. But look, I'll do a close up and I'll show you, hopefully, the little bits of grains, the fine grains of steel that's been cut off of that. By pushing this piece of paper just through that groove that I was drawing the knife, you should hopefully be able to see. I'm going to rub it across the front there. Hopefully, you can see there the filings. All these are metal filings that's come off that knife, just to give you a guide. So, sharpening the German knife that I use for bushcraft. I use one of these Norton Abrasive India Oil Stones. Very, very old one. How ancient is that? The box is pro worth probably more than the stone. But they come, as you can see it, maybe from the end there, it's split. It's got a coarse side and a smooth side. So I tend to use this, and they say with German steel, is around about 22, 25 degree angle. Now, if you have trouble thinking of what the angles are, obviously it's pretty much guess. You know, here you are, 90, then you go 45, then you sort of guess it around there. You can sort of try by folding a piece of paper. It will give you roughly half the 45. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, we've got a piece of paper here. We're going to fold that. Here's your 90 degrees. We're going to fold that. As near as you can get it, this is only a guide, people. 45 degrees. I knew when I went to school I learned something. Then if you fold it again, you're going half of the 45, it's only a guesstimate. It's gonna be a few degrees out. The 22 and a half degrees is there. So if you can imagine there's your stone, you're going to put the blade roughly, let me just squash that down as best I can, at that angle there, if that makes sense. You should be able to see that in the camera. So you're gonna be resting the blade, you see, just there. Maybe you can go up or down a few degrees, it's not rocket science, because your wrist will move, but you're gonna be basically drawing the knife across that angle in this way, like this trying to retain that angle. The best way I find is if you look from there, that angle, try and visualize the gap under here, which is like the end of my little finger. So then when you're doing it, you can visualize the gap under there, okay? Now what I like to do, just for grip, I normally do this in a workshop, I'm doing it, wait for this, on the pool table. Give you stones of grip there. You can actually probably do it in the box, but I like to take it out of the box. We're going to start with the coarse side first. So we're going to be going, not backwards, we're going to be going into it, the blade like this, at that angle if we can roughly, trying to take a little bit off of there. And we're going to put some oil on there as well. And for that, we're going to be using a real old school oil can. This product, you, can you can use soapy water, it's very, very good. Just a bit of oil on the coarse side like this. And then, if I move the camera, I'll do a couple of strokes, there's my angle. Try and visualise it this way, that's about the angle here. I'm going to do, let's say, ten strokes on the cool side first, on the one, one direction. Then I'm going to come back the other way, move that over a bit, give me an angle.
Now this is hard steel, so I've got quite a bit of pressure on there. Then I'm going to go to let's say nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. I'll show you again. That's roughly my angle. Press the blade up against it, and then going almost think you are slicing something. Okay, it's nine, then I come back the other way, nine. And there by, and thereafter you continue down to, let's say, three, two, one. Wipe off the surplus here. My goodness, that's, that, that steel is very good. Okay, I'm going to wipe the oil off of here. And I'm going to do the same on the other side, which as you can see is much finer and use much, much less pressure. Again, get our vintage can with a little bit of oil or soapy water doesn't really make any difference. Even smear it around a little bit. I've given this stone a good wash off in soapy water to start with because it's been used before. So there's going to be tiny little particles in there like you would get dirt in the pores of your skin and it just washes it out. So let's say, let's assume that I've done 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. I'm going to go back now lighter. 5. Now you might actually hear, this is much finer um, abrasion here so it's making a much much quieter noise now we go to four three you can do this as many times as you want you don't necessarily have to do this procedure it's just fairly standard for sharpening a knife wipe off the surplus I don't like to wipe it with the blade towards me, I'll wipe it with the blade away from me. Now, I could keep going with that. That's pretty sharp, I feel. Yeah, I figure it is sharp, folks. I could shave with this one. Just to show you what that's done. No pressure at all. Beautiful knife. Now, the last one is the, probably the most important one for me because I use this, by the way, for wood splitting this way as well and I can hit it across here with a piece of wood to help split big pieces of wood when I'm out doing bushcraft uh, with my guitar outdoors. There's a very, very strong blade here. But if you go for a fine angle, fine, it will cut. Look, even, even better than that. That is, you know, it will cut better. But the problem will be weaker. So around about 25 degrees, let's say that's half of that, just a little bit steeper, it will it will slice less, but it will cut better if that makes sense. And that's what I find anyway. But there we go. A nice knife to use. I like it. I feel so much happier with this safety guard here. And quite a bit I like the bowie shape. It's a bowie shape. Now, last one's a filleting knife. Final one. And this is the most important, it's my filleting knife. It's been used and abused, it's gone through bones, everything, scales, gill covers, heads, and obviously sliced fish. Now listen, I don't need to perform an autopsy with this thing, I just need it sharp enough to cut my bait, neat, tidy, not ragged. Now, I've got my stone I've just done the German knife with, but if you look at the two, I've got another stone here, this because it's a long blade, is quite a long pull, if that makes sense to say it. And I feel the stone's a bit short. Also, this one, this old one, it's probably 60, 70 years old, is, it's got a name there too as well, I must look that up, is raised, you see that, in, the, in, a, in a block. So you can use it in that block. I've been out, I've washed it up, I'm gonna put it down, put some oil on it. Let's get working on this fishing knife. Okay, here it comes. Trusty oil. Just going to spread that over there a bit. 
Don't want too much. The name on this, by the way, is, I can't quite read it here, E, G, at the start, and then Y at the end, Egredi? I don't know, Egredi? I don't know, I don't know. Now, if you actually want to see what you're going to be taking off, you can use a felt tip, what we call a felt tip pen. I can, I can, I can tell you, I could just mark the edge of this. And on the other side of that, I can feel it's very, very rough. Now, this will just give you an idea what you're going to take off there. And in fact, are you taking any off? Let's see if I can get this marked up for you. And then I'm going to go in on close up just to give you a guide. Just let that probably, probably does being on steel needs to dry a bit. Now, I'm hoping you can see this. I'm going to put the knife there. There's just a hint of blue along that leading edge there. So we're going to try and take that blue line off there. Now you can just see the blue marker pen along that blade. And that should give us an idea of uh, what we're going to be taking off there. And of course we need a shallow angle for this one. Because we're going to be doing quite a bit of slicing. Here guys is the angle. Now for a bushcraft knife, I was a little bit over, let's say 25, 23, 25 degrees. This should be 22 and a half. So I want to be shallower than that because this knife is going to be used more for slicing. So I want quite a shallow angle. I'm not going to be putting quite so much pressure on it. So we're going to do 10, 10, 9, 9, 8, 8 like this. Now this knife is flexible. Look, it's going to bend. Can you see that? That's what it's there for. So do not exert too much pressure on it to start with. Otherwise you'll be taking metal off of here and not quite so much off the tip. And it's generally, that would be here, would I be saying that area is the working area. You can hear the noise that's making. If I had the shorter stone, I don't think, if I show you there, I would have got a good stroke on that one, a good length. So now if you just look on the edge there, you'll be able to see, hopefully, that the felt mark is all completely gone. I've got just down here, a couple of little dings there which I can take out by further. You wouldn't see it from this angle, this distance, but once I go in there, you might be able to just see a couple of indentations, so I'll take those out with the stone. I'll just help it along with the steel that we mentioned earlier, just lightly, and that should just get rid of any little specks I've got on there. Now, this is how I am sharpening my various knives. I've shown you the different types of knives, and I've shown you how I sharpen them. I'm not performing any sashimi, any slicing, sushi. I'm not wafer thinning like they do in Japan where they're specialists in slicing so thin. I am just Joe Average. I want a knife that cuts rope, cuts nylon, cuts, it just cuts stuff. More priority, it needs to cut bait occasionally fishing line. Now that, I would imagine, is pretty sharp. I can feel even there. Now, this one cuts, as you can see. Not cut my finger, just cut through the paper. Very lightly. There's one more way, one final way that you could sharpen your fishing knife if push came to shove. And it's out in the garage. And one of the places that is hidden in full view, as the saying goes, is in fact, your car. Yes, you can sharpen your knife on the edge of the car window. Whether it's ground smooth on one side, the actual edge has a very, very slight roughness to it. You won't feel it with your fingers, with the steel here, you will feel it when I rub it across it. Now, the window's got like a curve on it here, and all I'm gonna do is just curve this along, keeping the same angle both sides if you can. Now, there's a curve on the window here, a natural curve. Every car might be different. I'm going to use that curve to try and benefit the actual stroke that I'm putting into the edge of the blade there. I have to go for something, let's say, 12 strokes on one side, just like this. 
counting them out. 10, 11, 12, and then do the same the other way, at about the same angle, if you can do it. It's near enough, it doesn't matter, it's not, it's not a science, it's trying to get a knife sharp, and of course most people have got a car, when you're fishing, if you're out in the woods, if you're camping, cooking, whatever. Do you know what? I've forgotten how many I'm doing now. So there you go, it doesn't get any easier than that. It's right in front of you, your very own vehicle, your car edge window can just put the extra edge on your knife. I figure this is sharp enough to... There's people out there saying, no, don't do this, Graham, don't do it, don't do it. I've got to do it, I've got to try. Well, you've seen it done in the tough guy films. I wonder. I'm not a tough guy. But I'm going to give it a go. How sharp is a razor? How sharp is this knife? Wish me luck, guys. It's smooth. Don't try this at home, kids. That is smooth, boys. That's smooth. Not many people that would shave this house with a Bowie knife in front of a monitor on a camera. Hmm. Now we have a man that's ready to hit the streets and looking cool. Yeah, smooth.